Module 5. Water Body and Ice Operations Water transfer operations work year-round and in all conditions. Whether working around fast-running rivers or iced over lakes, be aware that water is a hazard to take seriously. Welcome to the Energy Safety Canada video series on surface water transfer operations. This module focuses on working around water and on ice. Working on, around, or in water bodies and on ice are common activities in water transfer operations. Over 50 fatalities are reported every year in Canada. No one plans to fall through the ice or to enter the water, but these events happen and the risks must be understood. It is a good practice to establish a safe working perimeter where specialized PPE and procedures are followed. Planning and Oversight Prior to starting the job, it is a good first step to review tasks, identify competent team members for specific roles, establish time frames and check-in times, test communications, and review on-site conditions and limits for operations. Common activities are testing ice thickness, cutting access holes, deployment of equipment, inspections of equipment, and measurements of the water source. Each of these presents a high degree of risk. The best mitigation is to minimize operations by people as practically as possible. Ensure that everyone knows what the rescue plan is if the job doesn't go as planned. Quick reactions and knowing who is responsible for each job can get people recovered and out of harm's way faster. Cold shock. Working on ice and around cold water is a particularly dangerous hazard. This is due to the rate of energy transfer in water. Being immersed in cold water will remove heat from the body much faster than in air alone. Cold shock is a common cause of death from immersion in very cold water. The immediate shock of the cold causes involuntary inhalation, which can result in drowning. The cold water can also cause heart attack due to the heart working harder to pump the same volume of blood throughout the body. A person recovered from the water is still at serious risk and should see a medical professional right away. Planning and Rescue Equipment There is specialized PPE for use around water and when working on ice. Immersion suits can be used which insulate workers from cold shock and are designed to be buoyant. Workers wear a harness attached to a lanyard to aid in recovery from shore. High visibility flotation suits are available for rescue workers as is a special polypropylene rope that floats. Testing the ice. One of the first tasks is to test the ice thickness to determine if it is safe to load with people or equipment. From the result of the test, your supervisor can calculate the weight of people and equipment to be used and the strength of the ice in question. Anytime the ice is being penetrated, a rescue plan needs to be in place as the unexpected can occur. Alberta OHS mandates a minimum of 10 centimeters of ice for walking on ice and 15 centimeters for operations. When testing ice thickness, a separate borehole test is needed for each section as the ice thickness will vary. Blue ice has frozen very slowly and generally is good high strength ice, while white or opaque ice is not as dense and has less strength. In some cases, ice may not always be supported by water. If the water source has dropped or is not flowing under the area, the ice will not be supported. This is an extreme hazard and must be avoided. Operations on rivers can vary drastically due to flowing water and erosion. The path of the water flowing under the ice can cause weak spots and inconsistent thickness. Working on ice alone is not recommended. At minimum, two individuals should be present at a minimum distance of 10 meters separation between workers when testing ice thickness. Each person working on the ice should have two additional people stationed on the bank holding the lanyard for recovery. Planning. Temperature. Muskeg. Temperature changes can affect the ice quality and strength very quickly. Drastic changes in temperature may require retesting of the ice before normal operations resume. Working on ice that has formed over muskeg presents challenges. Ice thickness over muskeg is inconsistent so the loads that can be placed on it are difficult to determine. Work on muskeg is inherently more dangerous and specific plans should be made for each situation. Ice access. Chainsaws are the preferred tool used to create large access openings for deploying equipment. Ensure chainsaws are only operated by authorized and competent personnel 
as this is a specific and hazardous task. Deployment of equipment. One of the best ways to minimize risk to personnel is to work from the banks as much as possible. Utilizing pickers, cranes, or other shore-based methods is the preferred method to deploy equipment. Cold Water Rescue A detailed rescue plan where each member of the crew has a role is an important part of preparation. Rescues from ice and open water are unique and beyond the scope of this video. Be sure to know your role and what the company's specific procedure and equipment to use are. Flowing Ice and Ice Jams Flowing ice and ice jams are unique hazards to water transfer operations. In addition to being hazardous to people, equipment has been lost to high forces involved. Over the course of a few hours, a completely frozen river can break free and clear, taking any equipment deployed in it downriver and potentially pulling in gear located on the banks. Biological Concerns There are times when the water sources may be contaminated or suspect. Biological contamination may be a hazard. Ensure proper industrial hygiene practices are used. Water body and ice operations are dangerous. Thoughtful planning and clear communication between all workers is necessary to ensure the safety of everyone on site.